As of this recording, there's a rumor going about that Europe might be receiving the petting minigame when Fire Emblem is finally brought over there. Why? Because the game supposedly contains recorded dialogue for each instance of petting, but this means little in way of the game's actual European version. Usually when you're localizing a product for Europe, America, or Australia, you're going to have recording take place in a single location to save on costs for the other two regions. So when you're localizing, you need to cover all bases in regards to content. Scrap material that's localized isn't necessarily uncommon. In fact, it pretty much happens regardless of the game's changes. For instance, in Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, Bulma, despite not being a playable character, had dialogue regarding her inclusion in the title translated and recorded in English. And the reason for this varies based on the developer, the product, and it's very straightforward. When you're localizing games, generally you're dealing with spreadsheets and voice clips are unlikely to be labeled as Reina Pet Moan 01. In fact, it's more likely you'll come across clips labeled as E8V09047. And somewhere on a spreadsheet, it'll tell you what is said in that voice clip. So sorting through these audio files is going to be quite the chore. You never know where one may or may not be needed. Perhaps what's used in one place might be used outside of it in another context as well, so it's best to be safe. When dealing with given spreadsheets of dialogue, from my personal experience in QA, dialogue on one sheet may have no relation to what is on the next page or previous bracket. I'm sure other companies are more straightforward with their text, but this can create an issue in which dialogue from sheet 3 flows into sheet 10 and then sheet 5. So you have to go through QA to make sure that the dialogue flows and sounds correct. Choosing to skip out on a sheet because it contains dialogue not used in the final game can result in instances of untranslated text making their way through into the localized product. And it can be pretty stressful to deal with. There is no guarantee the team working on the project is larger than 5 people, and when your game has nearly 100,000 strings of text, even if you have dialogue divided up based on your character or region, you have to rely on QA to fix what slips under your radar. Each line requires delicate time and effort put into them. Usually you'll have content translated directly into English. It may sound robotic, but it's there. After you've finished, you can make sure things flow as to feel more natural and lively by rewriting them. Then you can finally send your text over to recording, and here's where things can be a bit of an issue. Usually when you're recording dialogue for a game, the recordings are done under a contract of sorts. If you want to use Japanese audio for your title, you're going to have to license it, for a fee of course. In some cases, it's cheaper to license the audio for use in other countries. It's why a lot of games tend to not have dual audio as the Japanese voiceovers are owned fully by the original developer. And as GTA proved with the Hot Coffee mod, if you leave it in the game, even if you can't normally access it, it's still there, and you can still come into legal issues because of it, as you're technically selling material you have no legal rights to. But for the time being, let's assume you're using dual audio in your title. With recording, you're not really acting with your body, but with your voice. You don't have the original writer or director on set to guide you like you would while making a Naughty Dog game. You have to rely on the team bringing over the product to do so, but even sometimes the project is outsourced to other companies. A representative may show up to assist in such a case, but it's doubtful anyone from the original dev team is there. So companies like Nintendo of America, located in Washington, may be outsourcing localization to 8 in Japan, or doing so internally. But either way, they'll send voice recording to be done somewhere else in Texas or California so there's already a disconnect between the participating companies. As a result, recording teams may handle casting, directing, and recording entirely with little to no supervision. So you might end up with a situation where Bulma is given proper recorded dialogue despite not being playable herself. After all, the team responsible has no clue the content is cut. How could they? They're just there to make sure the lines are recorded and the dialogue matches a desired tone. To make the matter worse, audio files may be incorrectly labeled. So suddenly you have a victory quote in the place of a love confession and vice versa. Now this isn't always the case as some outsourced localization studios do their own audio recordings, and they can properly supervise the process as a result, but it's a situation that has been known to happen a few times. In some instances, the content localized is heavily circumstantial. Persona 3 had instances of Fuka regarding the player cheating localized and properly recorded. Other times, the audio file not being there can cause a system error, causing the game to completely crash regardless of how that data is accessed. Why such instances don't use empty audio, I can't really say. Often, content isn't cut or changed until weeks before release, and there's always the possibility
possibility that it might be brought back if it was in fact cut out earlier. So as a general rule of thumb, it's just better to be safe than sorry. Sure, it may never end up being seen by the general public, and you'll end up doing extra work in the process, but the level of comfort that comes with it is well worth the effort. There's so much more we could discuss in regards to localization, but that's for another time. But while you're here, why not check out some of my other stuff? It really helps me out. If you want to see the channel grow, give it a like, share, and hey, maybe tell what you thought about the video in the comments, and be sure to stay tuned for future updates. It's all very much appreciated, and I couldn't do any of it without you. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the comments.